All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone to the first webinar uh, for We Give Catholic 2021. My name is Lisa and I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. And we also have Linda here from the Catholic Community Foundation. Hi everyone, um, I just want to get us started. I have a few words to say before Lisa takes us off and running um, and just hello friends and welcome to We Give Catholic 2021. And I just thank you for joining us today as we kick off a new season of generosity. So happy that you're with us. Before we dive in, I want to acknowledge all of you and just thank you for your leadership, especially during this past year. You know, all that you've been doing for your parishes, your schools, your Catholic charity sites and programs and your nonprofits, it's amazing. And I'm sure you would agree that the year has been both challenging and amazing in so many ways. So I'm continually reminded by my friends at Giving, Giving Tuesday, that it's important to reflect and refresh this year. I hope that you have all taken that time. There's so much great energy and so much energy around We Give Catholic as we start our sixth year together. But my hope is that that energy doesn't weigh you down. I want it to give rise and lift your ministry as the way it is meant to do. So don't try to do it all yourself. Um, I'm telling you today that it's it, now is the time to gather your team. And as I heard Bishop Molesic tell all the educators yesterday, it's important to take time to pray each day as well. So it's a perfect way to reflect, refresh, and rise through prayer. Our team here at, we, at the Catholic Community Foundation is privileged to work with all of you for We Give Catholic. I know you've heard us say it before. It's our gift to you. The day is integral to all that we do at the foundation in creating partnerships that lift up ministries throughout the diocese all year long. So this year, I'm excited to have three announcements to start off our year, and you are among the first to hear about them. First, I want to tell you that our uh, partners, our friends at Boyd Watterson, they gave us $10,000 last year, and we had our Magic Minutes matching gift that went to all the organizations. Well, they've increased their gift this year to $15,000. So we are really looking forward to another four or five minutes of just rapid fire matching gifts. And uh, we'll have more about that as the year unfolds. Second, and, and not second in its importance, is that we have a gift of $60,000 that we're gonna be offering as a matching gift for tuition assistance to our Catholic schools. So the details of this gift will be rolled out to the schools in a separate webinar that we'll have later in September and you'll receive information about that. These gifts of $15,000 and $60,000 for the tuition assistance are in addition to our $65,000 in prize money that's available this year as well. And third, our third announcement, is we're working with Northeast Ohio Catholic Magazine to create a giving guide that's going to list all of our participating We Give Catholic organizations in a checklist format. And that magazine's going to arrive in every Catholic household in the diocese. So that's approximately 240,000 homes that will receive the giving guide during the first week of November. Should be a great tool and a great way for donors to look at who is involved in We Give Catholic and check off who they're wanting to donate to on November 30th. So I didn't count this among our announcements because you already know, but our partner this year is Mighty Cause. And um, I've been meeting weekly with them over the past few months and they are a wonderful team. Um, we're on track for a great giving day this year. So today you're gonna to hear about some new tools that are very exciting and will be helpful in your communications to your new donors and to your existing donors. Uh, at this point, I think it's a good time to, friend it, to send it over to our friend, Lisa at Mighty Cause, who will lead us through today's webinar. Thanks again, everyone. Thank you so much, Linda. 
That was great. Uh, yeah, so for today, as Linda mentioned, um, we really want to go over in detail the platform so that everyone feels comfortable and confident coming on to Mighty Cause and utilizing the platform for this year's uh, giving day and challenge. Uh, so we're going to be going over a little bit about Mighty Cause for those of you who are unfamiliar with Mighty Cause, some basics about the overall giving day, how to register, uh, your organization, getting started on the platform, and then at the end, we'll go through any questions anyone has. If there are any questions that come up along the way, feel free to ut utilize the chat, um, and then we'll just be going over all of the answers uh, at the very end. All right, so uh, to get started, just a little bit about Mighty Cause. As Linda mentioned, we are the new technology platform partner with We Give Catholic. We've been around since 2006. We're one of the leading giving day providers out there in the market. Um, and we've helped raise with awesome organizations that we work with over $600 million for over 30,000 nonprofits. Um, and we try to provide as many tools and features that make it easy for you guys to fundraise um, and meet your goals and your campaign mission. So some basics about the Giving Day for this year. So just a reminder that this year's Giving Day is going to be on Giving Tuesday, November 30th, the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. That's always the easiest way for me to remember. Registration is going to be going on until November 1st. So you still have some time to, you still have a lot of time to register your nonprofit, but you have until November 1st to do so. And also as Linda note, um, noted, the prize structure um, and everything, that will be announced at a later time. Okay, so we're going to be going over the registration process. So uh, I'm going to dive into the website and actually be going over the whole process, but just to overall summarize what you will need to do. So first, you're going to want to go to wegivecatholic.org and click the primary registration call to action. It's in the middle of the homepage. It's hard to miss. Um, so you just want to click the register button. We have three strap instructions that you want to read through. Uh, and make sure that you follow each step. And again, we'll go over that in just a second. When you are all logged in, you'll be able to then start your registration process. Once you've completed the form and everything, uh, you'll get an email saying that you've submitted your registration and then you'll receive a separate approval email within 24 to 48 hours. So again, once you're approved, you will receive an email that lets you know that you are good to go for the event. And you can actually find your status as well on your organization page, which I'll go through at a later time. Okay, so let's jump in and go through that whole registration process so you know exactly where to go. All right. Uh, so as you can see, I am on www.wegivecatholic.org. And what I want to do is, like I mentioned, click on the big registration button in the middle of the page. And that's going to take me to the registration page. So as I also mentioned, there are going to be three steps that you want to read through and follow because depending on if you've participated before or not, um, it may change what exactly you do. So if you have participated in the past, what we did since Mighty Causes the new technology provider is we've migrated all of your information to the Mighty Cause platform. Um, so you're, you have a user account now on Mighty Cause, but you will need to set up your password so that your user account is all good to go and you can log in. So if you've participated in the past, you'll want to click the reset password to reset your password so that you can log in. If you are brand new to the platform, you can skip this step um, and move on to the second step. 
So the second step is reviewing and confirming your organization name uh, because you may have to use uh, a search tool to find your organization in order to register, which you'll see in a second. And you want to make sure that you are confirming the name that we have on file for your organization. Sometimes, you know, the way you spell your organization name may differ than what we have on file. For example, we may spell out Saint, but you shorten it to ST. So you just want to take a look at the list of organizations that we have already in our system just to confirm that um, if you need to search your organization that uh, you have that confirmed how we have it in our system. So once you have reviewed that information, then you actually want to go into starting the actual form. So the first step is that you actually have to select the nonprofit or organization or school that you are registering for. So this is a really important step because, um, again, you're saying I'm registering for, you know, my community foundation. Um, so as I mentioned, if you participated last year, we've imported your information. So you are in our system. Um, so you, if you already participated last year, an easy way to select your nonprofit is to look at the bottom where it says select from your organization and to select your nonprofit. What we're doing is how that's pulling in that information is if you participated last year and you were the lead, uh, we added you as an administrator for that nonprofit. And so it's automatically pulling any administrators for that nonprofit in our system. Um, if you're new to your organization or you are a brand new nonprofit, uh, you want to utilize the search then to find your nonprofit. Um, so we highly recommend searching by your EIN. That is the best way to um, find your specific nonprofit because, as you may imagine, there are many nonprofits that have the same name. So, that's the easiest way to search for your nonprofit. Um, but just for the sake of time, I'm going to search name. So, as you see, Mighty Cause, it's a very unique name. So, there's only one of them. Um, so, once I can confirm, yes, that is my EIN. We are located in Alexander, Alexandria, Virginia. That is our organization. I'm gonna select that and then click Select. So now I'm representing Mighty Cause and I can go in and start filling out my form. So for this year, there, we're only gonna be asking for one lead admin on the registration form, however, you can add more administrators. We just need one person to fill out the registration form. So I'm going to put in my name. So then it's going to ask basics about your nonprofit, like your website and phone number. So as you saw here. And then it's also going to ask the type of causes that your nonprofit serves or supports. Uh, so I'm going to choose community. And then it's going to ask also what county you're located in. Uh, the last three questions are, did you participate last year? I'm going to say no. And then uh, the category that of your nonprofit. So either you are a small school, medium school, large school, small parish, medium parish, large parish, Catholic charity site program, or other nonprofit in the Catholic directory. I'm just going to go with other. Uh, so if you, start the registration form and maybe you need to finish it at a later time or you want to before you submit it you want to review it at a later time you can always do so by selecting save and finish later what this will do is it will close out your registration it will save it so that you can always come back at a later time and complete it and submit it 
But if you are all good to go and you can submit it, I'm gonna click submit. And then it's going to give me a note that I've submitted. And I am all good to go now. Um, and as I noted, you'll receive an email saying that your registration's pending. And then once I'm approved, I will receive an email letting me know that I'm approved. Um, if you have any questions about registration, finding your nonprofit, et cetera, please contact us, our support team, Mighty Cause support team. We're more than happy to help and guide you through that whole process. Um, so please let us know if you run into any issues. All right, so just to go back to the webinar. So uh, now that we've gone through the registration process, now that your nonprofit's registered, the next part is getting started on building out your fundraising page where you're going to send donors and where you're also gonna be able to manage all of your reports, et cetera. So I'll also be jumping into the dashboard in a second so you can see what it looks like live on the site where you can find everything. Uh, but just wanted to briefly go over your organization dashboard. So your organization dashboard is essentially your management dashboard. That's where you're going to be able to, uh, as I mentioned, review reports, edit your page, et cetera. And it's only viewable to administrators set up on the organization page. And on your dashboard, it's divided up into a few key segments. So first being your overview, as you see in the image um, that we have on the right side. And your overview is going to give you quick stats about your nonprofit. It's really a welcome page just to say, hey, this month you've received uh, two new donors or you've received 30 new donors. Uh, here's quick stats about how many donations you've received year over year, et cetera. This will also be where you can see your current status, which I'll point out. Uh, you can see if you are currently pending or if you're approved for We Give Catholic. The next section is your fundraising section. Um, and this provides you all of the tools where you can uh, add your matching grants. Uh, if you wanna build out other fundraising pages, you can build those out in that area as well and review them. Reports, pretty self-explanatory, but provides all of the donation reporting, which I'll also show you in a second. And settings allows you to manage all of your legal info, uh, your set up your EFT and add additional administrators. So let me jump into the site and go through that. So um, if you have been set up as an administrator already on the platform, a really quick and easy way to get to your organization page and your dashboard is by using your, the login tool. Uh, so if I click on the login tool, um, the first thing that I will see is Mighty Cost Foundation and that's the organization that I'm an administrator of. Um, so if I click that, that will take me to my organization page where I can see my organization dashboard. All right, so for just the sake of um, going through everything, I'm gonna show a blank page so you can kind of see what that all looks like. I've just chosen a nonprofit already in our system for We Give Catholic. So as you see, this is what a lot of your pages might look like. Um, if you don't have anything, again, if you've utilized the platform last year or participate, participated before, we've migrated a lot of information over. So you may have a logo image or banner image that you can update. So your overview is going to be where you can see that status. So this is where you're gonna be able to see if you are pending or if you can, or if you're approved. If you haven't filled out your registration, it will also say, as you see here, registration's now open, which means that 
you haven't completed registration yet uh, and you need to do so still to participate. If I need to go back to the organization page to edit it, I can simply click on organization page and it takes me back to your organization page. This is gonna be the primary page where donors can come in and make a donation for your organization. At the very top, there's a quick edit tool. So you can simply select this and see all of your editing capabilities. And also at the very top, there is a toggle, edit mode and, um, and edit mode on. And you can use that if you wanna see how does my page look for myself or for my donor. So as you see, if I toggle this off, it changes the formatting. At the very top, you have uh, your banner image and your logo. And you can always edit these sections by simply also clicking into these areas. So the banner image, you want to make sure that it's rectangular um, and it is uh, going to be mobile responsive, which means that it is going to be changing the formatting based off the screen that you're looking at. So we don't really recommend using banner images that have text in it uh, because again, it may be formatted a little differently if you're looking at it on a mobile device versus a desktop because it's going to be changing to fit the screen that you're looking on. The logo image in the very middle, again, you can simply edit this by selecting the pencil icon, um, is going is has a one-to-one -one aspect ratio, which means that your logo image that you upload here should be a square image. Otherwise, if it is rectangular or it doesn't, again, fit the square image ratio, it's the whole image is not going to fit in there and it's going to be cropped. So you want to make sure that it's a square image. This little palette that you see here, the painter's palette, that's going to be your theme color. So if your organization or school has a, you know, has a branded color that you use, you can choose that right here. And uh, if you move that, as you see, it's changing the donate button and also the dollars raised that you see here in your goal. So you can update that so that it fits your branding. At the very top, you'll see that there are two buttons. It's a donate button and a fundraise button. So for donors, if they want to make a donation, they can come onto your organization page and click donate. Um, and I'll take them through the checkout process. And we'll go into how to edit this checkout process in a second. The fundraise button allows for any peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So for example, maybe you have board members that, or volunteers that wanna fundraise on behalf of your school or organization or church um, for We Give Catholic. Uh, maybe you wanna run a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign. Fundraise allows for individuals or yourself to quickly and easily fundraise for your nonprofit. Uh, so that is a really easy tool that people can use. Again, if you don't plan on util you know, having peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, you can ignore this button. Um, it just is an easy way for people to begin to fundraise for your um, organization. Also at the, really, at the very top, you can enable fundraising stats and a goal. So if you wanna list a specific goal that you have, you can um, list that there. And you can also edit the, how you want your metrics to be viewed at the very top. Um, so for example, if you want to um, disable amount raised or disable number of donors, and you can also uh, choose, you know, if you want to um, edit this goal amount as well. So below uh, the metrics at the top of your page, you have a description area. So your description area is an inline text editor, which means that you can add photos, videos, uh, you can format your messaging however you want there. There's a save button. So for any changes that you wanna make, you can always save when you make your edits. 
Um, there's 5,000 characters in total, so you will have a lot of room and space to share what, your, what you want to share with your donors this year for We Give Catholic. There's also, if this is not enough space for you or if you want another area to share additional information, you do have the ability to add a custom tab, so another inline text editor that provides, again, additional information that you want to share with donors. Um, at the very bottom, you can also enable a media gallery, Instagram, Instagram gallery, and Facebook gallery. Uh, so media gallery would be just any photos that you want to display. Uh, and then Instagram gallery and Facebook gallery, if you want to connect with your organization's Facebook or Instagram accounts, you can display those images that you have uploaded there. At the very bottom, you'll see organization data. And this is really um, information for your donors in case they do need to contact you um, or reach out to your organization. We highly advise just um, providing uh, email, phone number, or a place on your website that they can go to so that they can contact you if they do have any questions. If a donor reaches out to us, we actually will utilize this information um, if we need to send them to you. So that's why, again, we highly recommend providing your contact info there um, so that we also know what's the best place that you are publicly showing that donors should go to if they have a question specifically for your nonprofit. So as I mentioned, um, the donate page is something that you can actually edit. Uh, so if you have certain donation levels or descriptions that you want to add on your checkout flow, you can actually do, the, do so through the checkout area on your dashboard. So if I select checkout, um, I have see three options and we're first going to go through the donation form. So as you see, I have the ability to edit my donation levels or even add additional donation levels. So let's say I want this to be, I'm gonna lower it to $10, but I also wanna add a description. Um, let's say this is a school um, purchases one backpack. So then my donors will be able to see the description I've added and also I've edited the donation flow. All, at all times, there's always a custom donation amount on the checkout flow. So regardless of the levels that you put on your checkout form, there will always be a custom amount that donors can utilize when making their donation. Uh, donors will also be able to hide their name from public display if they want their name to be hidden from any public timelines, etc. And also they can also they can also dedicate their donation if they um, want to share uh, in memory of or um, on behalf of someone. If you have, for example, a school and you also want to provide donors the ability to designate their donation, maybe you want them to choose, I want to support an arts program or a sports program or academics program you can actually add those options as designations. As you see right now, there's general fund and then I can add a additional one. Maybe I want my sports program to be the default designation. I can just save this. And then donors will be able to choose from those options. Again, if you don't have, if you don't find that tool necessary for you, you can always remove it or simply not add it. Super easy and simple. If there are any additional questions that you also want added to your checkout form, maybe you want to collect phone numbers. We will automatically collect addresses, but maybe you want to ask if donors are interested in volunteering for your nonprofit. You can always add a custom question. Um, and even add a custom answer type as well. And that will be added to the checkout flow, flow. And I'll also show you where that information, where you can find that in a second. 
at the bottom, this is where donors will add their payment information. And for donors that are paying over, or their donation amount is over $50, they'll actually be able to also donate via ACH. Uh, so if they want to donate via their bank account, they will have the option to change their payment method to ACH if they want that. And then as, as you see at the very bottom, they will see their net total and then they can pay. So once a donor completes their transaction, they actually will receive a pop-up thank you page. You know, it'll say thank you for donating and you can actually add a custom message to your thank you page. And that's where the section and checkout thank you page comes into play. So you can um, utilize the inline text editor, as I noted, um, add any message, images, videos that you want. You can even add a call to action button if you want to send them to your website or you want to send them to a link that allows them to subscribe to a newsletter. Um, you can provide all of that information here and then as well preview that on the site. All right. So after also they receive the thank you page, uh, donors will also receive a receipt as well. Uh, so within the donation receipt um, section within the checkout area, this is where you can also customize the thank you message on the receipt. Uh, so here in the thank you receipt, you can add images or videos, but again, any text that you want to add here, um, you can go ahead and do that. You can also send yourself a test receipt. So you see what that looks like. And we also provide you just a quick preview here so you can see um, the messaging that we add and if you want to add any further messaging on here. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, um, one of uh, once you kind of re start receiving all of your donations, maybe you're collecting all of your donor data from some custom questions that you've added, um, you can actually uh, go ahead and go to your donations report to see all of that information. So within your donations report or in your report on your left hand side dashboard, you actually have a couple of um, Oops. Uh, you actually have a couple of different reports available to you so that you can review. So all donations will just show you all of the donations that you've received on the platform. You can filter by a certain time period. Uh, so, or I'm sorry, a specific date. Um, so if you have utilized the platform before, or maybe you're currently utilizing the platform, um, you can utilize the filter. Otherwise, you know, you'll see on November 30th all of the donations you received. Um, and you can also search by uh, name as well. So if you're looking for a specific donor, you can utilize that search to find the donor. At the top, we'll give you a quick breakdown of all of your metrics. So you'll see your net online, your online matching grants. And in the actual report, we'll provide you the donor name, their amount, date, uh, and if it counted towards We Give Catholic, which it will if you're registered, and their email. So any of the additional questions that you've uh, asked in the donations report that you need, such as maybe phone numbers, or again, maybe you asked if they want to volunteer in the future, all of those answers will be available in the downloadable donations report. So this is a report that you can download by using the download button and it will download it into a CSV file. Um, in this report, we also add additional details that we don't include on here. So for example, if you need the specific time that they donated, we will include that on the downloadable report. So all of that is available there for you to review. Um, so one of the metrics that I have listed here is matching grants. Um, and that's one of the fundraising tools that you have available to you that you can utilize um, on the platform for We Give Catholic. And we highly recommend setting up a matching grant 
um, if that's possible. And again, our, the second webinar that we have, we'll go into that in a little bit more detail. So if you do have a matching grant um, and you do wanna add that through the platform, you can do so through the fundraising tool section. So the fundraising tool section, if you click matching grants, you will have the ability to see any current matches that you have live, any upcoming matches that you have, or any past matches that you've had. So to create a match, all you would do is at the top select create, and then you'll be asked to fill out your match details. So as I mentioned, we'll go into matches a little bit more in a future webinar, uh, but this form will just ask you to fill out some basics about your match. So who is the match sponsor? What's the title of the match, the value? Um, so maybe you have a $1,000 match, for example. You can add even an image if you do plan on having any corporate sponsors, or maybe you have a board member that's willing to match and they have a logo for a business that they wanna promote you can add an image to your match. And then you would set up your match perimeters or the type of match that you have. So you would set up the date that it starts and ends. So you wanna make sure that you're only setting it up for We Give Catholic, so November 30th. And then you choose the type of match it is. So if it's a simple match, one-to-one, -one, you would just keep it as match a percentage of each donation 100%. However, we also have different matches available uh, we also have apply a total match when a certain quantity of donations is received. For, so for example, if you have a match that um, you receive your match only when you receive your first 50 donors or first 50 donations, uh, you can set up a match um, so that it is, will calculate based off that type. Um, so there's a lot of options available to you. Uh, once you have that set up, uh, at the bottom, you add an email address for the grantor or yourself. This would be someone who you would want to be notified that the match has been completed or um, fulfilled, and you would create your match. So once the match is created, it won't start until the start date that you've entered. Uh, so again, if you enter your match today, it's not gonna start until November 30th if, if that's the start date that you entered. Once the match is live on the platform, you'll actually see a button on here that says a match is live. So that donors will see, oh, my donation is going to be actually matched. If they want to review more information about the match, they'll actually see a match tile on the bottom of your organization page that will provide more match details. Um, it'll see the progress of your match so that, you know, if I go and see more details about your match, it'll tell me who the sponsor is if you choose to make that public or um, how many more donations or donors that you need to, in order to fulfill the match. So that's just a little bit brief detail about matching grants. Again, we'll go into that in more detail in the next webinar. Uh, but just so you know, that is available for you to add in the fundraising tool section. So as well within the fundraising tool section, you have a really cool tool in here called text to give So text to give allows you to set up a keyword that donors can text and make a donation uh, for We Give Catholic. So to set up a keyword, you would enter the keyword that you would want donors to text. So maybe that is, I'm on Catholic Community Foundation, maybe that's CCF21, something that's abbreviated and short and easy. Once I've entered my keyword, all donors would have to do is text this number, 844-844-6844. That's a universal number, every organization, that's what you would send to your donors to text. And then they would use the keyword that you've set up. So let's say CCF21. And if I were to text that keyword to that number, it's gonna send me a link to your organization page. 
So this is a really great useful tool if anyone is planning on creating a live event where it's hard to have many computers at once, you want a really easy way that people can donate from their own mobile device in a really easy, seamless way, this is a really awesome solution for that. If you are planning on having a live event for We Give Catholic. And we'll also go through that in a little bit more detail in the next strategy uh, webinar as well. Uh, but that is one option that is available to you in case you're starting to turn the wheels and plan what type of campaign you're gonna run for We Give Catholic this year. All right, so the last section that I'm going to be going over in more detail is settings. So settings obviously is a broad term, but your organization settings is where you're gonna find a lot of the legal, um, any of the backend uh, settings that you need to update on the platform. So within general settings on your dashboard, this is where you can customize your URL. You can also add alternate search names and also update your social sharing. So your URL, it will be we give Catholic um dot org slash what we currently have in our system in this case is catholic diocese of cleveland foundation but if you want to update that you can go ahead and do so and also if there is a alternate name that you go by so in this example let's say it's ccf you know a lot of donors are going to be searching for ccf on the platform you can actually add that into um here so that if someone uses the search and searches CCF, your organization will turn up. And social sharing is the image and text that appears when you share on Facebook or Twitter. If you wanna make that a little bit different or customize that, you can do so on here. Organization info is, um, it also provides you that, uh, contact info that I shared with you on your organization page. You can update that here as well. But if you need to update your legal name or address, you can do so here. Your legal name and address, it's backend information, but if you need to update that, that is here. And it does require documentation as well. For the legal address, um, we do have two ways to receive disbursements. One is through setting up EFT and one is through check. Um, now, if you can only receive check, uh, then you wanna make sure that you have the correct legal mailing address here. If it needs to be updated, as I mentioned, you do have to add legal doc, or you have to provide legal documentation. So all we ask is for a utility bill, um, bank statement, um, really just you know any verification document that can confirm that the address that you're providing belongs to your organization. And then the last, uh, or last two sections we're gonna be going over is disbursement settings and admins. So at the very top of disbursement settings, it'll just reconfirm the legal mailing address that we have on file if you plan on receiving checks. However, if possible, we highly recommend setting up EFT or what we call direct deposit. Um, because with check disbursements, there is a $5 service fee per check, um, just because unfortunately checks, there is a fee to send them out. However, uh, with EFT, there are no fees. So that's why we always highly recommend signing up for uh, EFT. And as well, you receive funds actually faster. Um, so with EFT, all you would need to do is just add your routing and account number. Um, and in most cases, you will also be asked to uh, provide a copy of avoided check or bank letter. So you wanna make sure that you have that ready um, to provide that as verification. Um, it takes us about two to three business days to confirm. And once you submit that information and it's approved, you'll receive an email letting you know um, when, you will, when you have received that verification. When you receive your disbursement after We Give Catholic, uh, you can actually find a disbursement report in your report section of your dashboard. So this is where, again, we were able to find all donations. 
But if I click disbursements, uh, once you receive your first disbursement, you can actually come here and see a whole breakdown of your disbursement. If you're confused about, you know, what donations were included, any fees, et cetera, you can always come back here and see the breakdown and it really breaks it down in a comprehensive way so you can understand the net total. Um, and also if you're set up as an administrator, you're automatically gonna receive an email that um, sends you to this report as well. So speaking of admins, the last section that we're gonna be going over are your admins. So this is going to be anyone who you want to have access to your organization dashboard. Um, there is no limit on administrators, so you can add as many as you want or as little as you want. And you can also remove administrators at any time. Um, so to add a new administrator, you would simply select add new admin and then enter their first name, last name, email address, and their position at your organization. Once you've added that, they're going to be added as an administrator, just like you see here. And again, if you have anyone that you want to remove as administrator, you can simply select the X and then remove them. So it's really easy and simple to add new administrators or remove them. And we highly recommend adding any new administrators that um, are going to be helping you with your reporting or editing or managing your page. Also, administrators will receive a donation notification email for every donation that you receive um, on We Give Catholic on, the, on Giving Tuesday. Um, you can always disable that tool if you don't want donation notification emails, but that is something that all administrators will receive and they will also receive any disbursement emails notifying them that your organization has received a disbursement. So again, that, to add new administrators, you wanna make sure that you go to your organization dashboard, select settings on your organization dashboard, and then click admins. One thing I wanna point out with settings, uh, cause sometimes it can be confusing, is that when you click on your log in menu here. You will see uh, my name, well, your name if you're logged in, fundraising settings and log out. Uh, the settings listed here is different than the settings listed on your dashboard. The settings in your menu refers to your user account settings. So if you need to reset your password, or you want to turn off um, email notifications, anything that's related to your the email address you have set up as an account on the platform. That is what these tools are referring to on the login menu. Any settings that are related to your organization, it's going to be on your organization settings. Just wanted to clarify that because sometimes that can be a little confusing on the platform. And again, for any questions that you have, feel free to reach out to us and uh, we'll be more than happy to um, provide any support. You can find our contact information on We Give Catholic website or you can contact support at mightycause.com. Um, so let's go back to the webinar. Uh, so one of the things on the We Give Catholic site uh, is, you'll have available is our toolkit. So our toolkit will have um, all of our webinars available there. You can have, we also have a lot of how-tos, links to support articles that are helpful, as well as templates for email or social media and images you need for any marketing that you're planning on doing for the challenge. As I mentioned, uh, we are here to help you. <laughs> so please contact Mighty Cost Support Team for any technological support. Um, we are the experts on the platform. So please feel free to reach out. Um, 
we're so much, we're so happy to help, you know, with anything. So again, you can find a, a contact support link on We Give Catholic site, but you can also contact us through support at mightycause.com. All right, so we're going to um, be going through any questions now that anyone has. Um, again, there is a Q&A or chat area um, if you do have any questions. I might be able to help you with that a little bit, Lisa. Okay. A couple, couple questions came in on the chat. One of them was, will the emails be collected in the checkout process or do does the organization need to specifically ask for that? Great question. You do not specifically have to ask for that. It will automatically be collected because we need their email address in order to send them a receipt. So we are automatically collecting their email address for you guys. And that will be available on the donations report for you to see as well. That's great. The other question that came in was, um, can individuals individual administrators change their email notification settings? Yes. So that's something that is available on each individual's user account settings. Um, you can find that, uh, if you remember that, the login menu that I showed you, if you click settings on that, you'll see where you can turn off email notifications if someone doesn't want to receive an email notification. And again, if someone is lost, feel free to send them to us and we are more than happy to help direct you or turn them off for you. So those email notifications that you're speaking of come from Mighty Cause, correct? Correct. They're going to be coming from support at mightycause.com. Um, so if you do use a, um, a network or, um, you know, I would just make sure to double check with your IT team that you aren't blocking emails from us and asking them to whitelist um, any emails that come from at Mighty Cause. Doesn't happen all the time, but sometimes certain networks will block emails coming from us and um, putting them into spam. Um, so if that is something that happens commonly with your emails, um, I would just recommend reaching out to your IT team and asking them to whitelist us. And, and so, you know, um, all my leaders know that they receive continuous emails from me mm -hmm. um, from now through the giving day, re really mostly heavily in October um, and November. So if you have any problems with those emails or you want, want uh, to reach out to me about that. So just to clarify that. A couple other questions came in um, on the Q&A. Um, this one is, can you, uh, can you add pictures instead of a purchase? All of We Give Catholic goes toward our annual fund, which is unrestricted money. Um, so I'm so not exactly sure what was meant by purchase instead of a purchase. Can we add pictures? Maybe they're talking about it there. At, in the donation levels when you're, you know, $20, yeah. $30, $60, perhaps yeah. that, if not, if this person would just clarify in the chat. Yeah, unfortunately you can't add pictures to the actual checkout form. Um, that form is pretty much templated as you saw it. Um, you really can only customize those levels or descriptions. Oh, okay. Okay, I see they, they clarified it with on the donation amounts. Yeah. Example, um, purchase book bags, right. Uh, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't add any images to that section. But again, you could add if you did want to, you know, the only place, I guess, related to the checkout form is that thank you page, which is afterwards. But um, one other option is if you really did want to include certain images, I've seen before that organizations have um, relisted their donation levels and added more information on their about section or description. Um, so that's really the best place I would say to add any additional information that you want um, about, you know, the donation levels or what donors can be supporting. So this question is about text to give and yeah. it allows, does it allow you to upload a file with cell phone numbers from your database? Or does a mass email yeah. or do a mass email text for those? Yes, 
unfortunately it doesn't work that way. It doesn't allow you to text donors. It only allows donors to text for you. So that's why uh, in the example that I provided, it's really beneficial for a situation where you may have, like I said, a live event where you don't want to bring a lot of computers you want to have an easy way for donors to make a donation and not have a line or a queue where people are waiting um, to make a donation on a, a single laptop. Um, so it's really just a way for donors to text versus you to text donors. So. Yeah, I can see so many applications for that. Yeah, schools, mm -hmm. if you're having pep rallies and parents are there or you're doing your activities. Exactly. Or yeah. any, any um, nonprofit that's doing a, some sort of a gathering which mm -hmm. I hope we'll be able to do. Um, yes. this, this would be a great way to use this text to give. I'm really excited about the text to give and giving each one of you the control over that text to give with your own keyword. I think it's gonna be yeah, a great and communication tool. I've even seen um, some nonprofits, you know, just in case they have used that on their emails, added to their website, just providing donors, you know, additional way in case, you know, <laughs> any way that's easier for them to make their donation. Um, it, it's really easy to add, you know, to signature, for example, on an email. Right. And I think we'll be going over some of these great new features. Um, well, for sure, Mighty Cause will be going over them in their October, uh, their October webinar. But here at the foundation, we're going to be offering our training days again. Mm -hmm. um, they will be remote. Uh, there'll be two days of training days later in September, and you'll receive more information about that and how to register. Um, so for right now, we're getting through some of the um, over, high, high level overview. And uh, so that's great. Another question here about text to give. Mm -hmm. Will the text to give keyword stay with our organization all year, year to year, or will we be uh, able to be changed each year? year? Yeah, so that's a great question. So text to give, yes. Um, text to give is actually the keyword that you set up. It has to be unique. So once you have created a, a keyword, that is yours. No one else can take that keyword. So that's why when you are setting up the keyword, uh, you we recommend not using something that's very broad because it may be taken, such as give. Um, using something that's more unique to your nonprofit because once you set it up, no one else can take it. Right, right. All right, any other questions are going to come in? If not, we'll, we'll wrap up and we'll get you on your rainy day here. Yes, and as I mentioned, again, if, if a question comes up afterwards and you, know, you realize something came up, feel free to reach out to us. More than happy to help. Um, if you are having trouble finding your organization for to register or need your organization set up, please feel free, again, just to reach out to us and we're more than happy to help. And as, as I promised, we, uh, we were doing a giveaway and the random drawing, we picked out Heidi Tripp from St. Vincent, St. Mary um, High School, and I'll be contacting her in order to send out a, a, a quarter zip really nice quarter zip with We Get Catholic embroidered on it. So congratulations to Heidi um, on that. But also, I also want to remind you of the current contest that we have going with $500 award to get us through the month of August you have to submit your impact stories in a short video or a PowerPoint and tell us the impact of what you did with your funds that you raised last year. Um, this is going to be important for you to share with your donors at one point, and we'll promote that during our We Give Catholic live stream on November 30th. So we have our wonderful intern, Courtney, back again this year. You might have heard from her already, and you can get your submissions to Courtney. Um, and I think, you know, I just want you to know that we're here for you. We want to help you, just like Mighty Cause. What a great partner they are. I think you already can see that what great features they're offering us this year. So we thank, uh, Lisa, we thank you at Mighty Cause. I thank all of the people who attended today. And please reach out, we're here for you, we're happy to help. And God bless you and have a great day. All right, have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.